Hi everyone and welcome back to Switch Up. Now, over the Christmas period, you obviously, well hopefully, saw our 12 days of Switch Up series. It just seemed to really excite everyone, didn't it, Glenn? It just went down so well. Yeah, people seem to like this uh, more podcasty formula and we did say that if it was uh, something people liked, we'd try to do it every so often and we've got a list for you today that we feel is, is the perfect time to bring it back. Definitely, yeah. So today we're going to be looking at our personal best games ever so far on the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's important to just say before we start that, first of all, it doesn't have to correlate with scores we've given, if indeed these are games that we have reviewed, because that's not the way that personal preferences always work. And secondly, if there's a game on here that you feel is obvious and how on earth can they not have picked it, it just comes down to, to personal preferences games that we enjoy genres that we enjoy so just bear that in mind and if you want to put yours in the uh, in the comment section please do so it is worth mentioning that if it is still january of 2022 we have our 10 percent off everything on our website you can actually buy nintendo switch games on there as well as some xbox and playstation stuff but it's real in my opinion best use is getting 10 percent off of those eShop cards so with that said what are our personal favorite games ever so far on the nintendo switch well let's find out Okay, coming in in fifth place then, Mark, do you want to kick us off? Uh, yeah, I think I do. But even now, even up to the, the very final minute, I personally am tossing up things in my mind and thinking, oh, why didn't I say this? I will say, just as a disclaimer, Zelda Breath of the Wild goes without saying it's going to be on everyone's you know top games list. But personally, it's not in my top five. So I'm going to say that right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not on mine either, but I'll, uh, I'll explain a bit more about that in one of my picks later. But yeah, what have you gone for for number five? Awesome. Then? Well, in number five, and it might be a bit strange to some people, but certainly not my uh, playtime, it's Rocket League. Now, Rocket League is a free-to-play, um, I don't know what you'd call it. It's like a mixture of racing, bowling. It's a few genres mashed together to create this weird car-based sport. But it was actually based on, there was a game that was released way, way back, and it essentially had exactly the same formula. It had a ludicrously long name, and I forget what it was now. I mean, it was never going to sell with a title. That I'll try and think of it as this list goes on. But it was exactly the same. It was something like turbo-powered rocket jet cars or something ludicrous. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the actual core gameplay was exactly the same. So when Rocket League took off, the developers were so taken aback. And it's just because it's so... It's what we always look for, right? It's that pure, fun gameplay. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've not played anywhere near as much of it as you. I've played a lot of it with you, actually. Mm. And um, it has that, that one more go uh, hook, doesn't it? Yeah, to a, to a compulsive level. Like, this game's dangerous. I think my um, my total <laughs> playtime is well over a 1,000 hours. I mean, Jeez. Yeah, I know. But And also having, like, the leagues <laughs> and, and the league kind of resets every month or so. And it's just nice. I, I'd, I love the progression in it. I love the skill, to be honest. The difference between when you first start out and, and latter is just incredible. Great game. Yeah, and I, like I say, I mean, I, I played it with you and uh, I was very much a passenger in that team, I, I'm quite <laughs> happy to admit. But um, it's, it's crazy to see how skill-based it, it can be because for me, being you know the, the newbie on the team, I was just trying, you know, chasing the... It's like a dog with a bone, isn't it? Trying to chase the ball <laughs> down. But to see what other people do, it's amazing. Yeah, very, very enjoyable game. Very good game. Definitely. What's your number five? Well, my number five, um, I had I, I had four games that I really struggled to pick between because it meant that three of them were not going to make the list at all, which seemed so harsh, you know? Yeah. Um, but in the end, I went for one, again, may surprise some people, a game called Raging Loop. The reason I picked this one, so this, before I start, this is a, a visual novel uh, with a horror theme. And I did review this one, actually, and it was one of those where the code come in and I was like, yeah, you know, I like horror. It's, you know, I enjoy visual novels. I'll give it a go. And it, I played it, and I enjoyed it, and then I, I returned to it and enjoyed it even more. And it's kind of one of those games that has just bubbled along until I, I can't believe that I didn't like it as much to begin with as I do now. Do you know what I, I mean? I do. It's, it's funny, actually, because I haven't played a huge amount of visual novels, but just listening to your review and just you talking about this, it really sold it to me. Yeah, it's it's the story is what does it for me. And, you know, obviously being a visual novel, that's <laughs> that's a huge, huge part of it. In terms of the gameplay, some visual novels do, do have quite... Um, interactive gameplay mechanics this one doesn't to be fair um but it's just such an amazing story you, you basically you play as this man that gets lost one night uh his, his motorbike breaks down 
and he gets taken back to this uh, this village, kind of in the middle of nowhere. And then this this intense fog comes over, and he, he basically gets stranded there. But then, as the game goes on, basically this this village, well, the villagers uh, believe that it's under a, a curse, and this fog comes over, and basically the people that live in the village are chosen to be one of a few different roles. One uh, becomes what they call the wolf and is basically a, a killer. Mm. And then there are other ro roles, like one one of them um, will know who the killer is, but they're not allowed to say. One of them will do this, one of them will... And it's because it just becomes this game of like, who's who and, and who can you trust, you know, as you try to pick out who the killer is. But what's incredible about it is that you know, the loop in the in the title implies that you, you go back in time and you kind of do it again and the roles have all reversed this time and they've all switched around. Groundhog Day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's just such a very clever story. And I just, I was hooked. I was so hooked on this uh, on this game. Hey. So if you're one that enjoys visual novels, you'd need to know what you're getting in for. But if you do, this is one I'd, I'd highly recommend. Lovely. So that takes us on to our number four picks. And from something like Rocket League to something totally different, I'm actually going to go for, and this has changed very last minute because I've just suddenly remembered a epic play session I had with this game, and it's Ease 8. Mm. Ease 8 was, you okay. know, I remember you picked this one up, I think you might have even bought it, um, and, and yeah. you played through it and you were like, this is incredible. Um, it's, a, yeah. it's a funny, actually, a lot of the games we play, end up we end up selling them to each other. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, uh, well, I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd, sorry, before, before you start, I just, I'd always wanted to play the E series because it, it actually was quite a different thing when it first started. Mm. Um, but I hadn't played many of them, and then when eight came to the switch, I was like, right, well, this is the time I'm going to jump on board and, and get to, get get into the series, you know. And like you say, I then said to you, yeah, this game is well worth, you know, well worth playing. Exactly, and it's, do you know what? As as far as JRPGs and action RPGs go, it's it's not very daunting, is it? No, it's quite accessible. Yeah. Definitely, and I liked some of the boss fights. It wasn't overly complex, but there was still a bit of strategy in some of those fights, um, and just gradually building up that 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 main area and getting new people. and And I like the me the mechanic of that. Then allows you to expand to different parts of the island. Yeah, yeah. It was quite an interesting concept, wasn't it? Getting shipwrecked on on the island and having to rebuild, as you say, and and find uh, fellow survivors who would then bring their skills into that kind of core base that that hub area yeah exactly and and getting shipped direct on an island it's cliche 101 but then what followed wasn't yeah exactly and i liked as you say you are right you know that that is very cliche but it's also the island itself is also a very uh vibrant setting mm -hmm. to, to spend a game playing on isn't it you know definitely and and i guess it's an example as well where visuals there's a point where they just don't really matter it's not the most beautiful game is it let's be honest no no but it it creates a, a very pretty for want of a better w mm -hmm. word world doesn't it that's yeah the visuals aren't great but it's, it's just more than the sum of its parts in a way definitely and there are some really emotive segments without spoiling anything between those characters mm, yeah yeah really good game really good nice game. one right my number four then um i tried to not pick games that have been out elsewhere before if i could help mm -hmm. it but if it was a game that was head and shoulders above anything else it was going to make the list you know that was just the way it was yeah. and uh and that is the case here this is pikmin 3 deluxe now um, there was just no way I couldn't, you know, there was I couldn't not pick this game. I, I love the Pikmin series. Um, I remember the first one coming out for the GameCube, and I remember being in Curry's or PC World, I think it was as it, as it was called then, and I had that in my hand, and I had a game called Doshin the Giant, <laughs> and I was like picking up these two completely obscure games I'd never heard of. I was like, I'm going to buy one of them because they both just look so different, and I plumped for Pikmin, and uh, it was just a wonderful game, really beautiful game. And, and free, maybe I don't enjoy it as much as some of those others, but I just, every time a new game in the series comes out, it's like an event because it's so <laughs> rare, you know? Yeah, I think it's, what, well, it's like nine years since that came out on the Wii U? It's, it's been a while. I can't think how long, but yeah, it's, it has been a while. And, and the Pikmin 4 has kind of been promised for, for equally as long and, and hasn't materialized. Mm. But I just love, I love the, um, we kind of spoke about the, the island just now for Ease 8, and this has a similar, effect for me because it's kind of this um it reminds me of playing like with toy soldiers as a kid you know playing in the garden because you are these tiny people in this overgrown world and everything is giant and mm. everything is huge and I, I always love that sort of setting mm. and i love obviously the pikmin characters themselves are are great and uh the, the attachment you feel to them because he's effectively an rts yeah. but I, i've never felt so <clears throat> attached to my my people 
in in a game, you know? I do, and I also know what you would sound like as a king now. <laughs> <laughs> I am so attached to my people. <laughs> there was a it's funny you say that. It was a game called Little King's Story on the the Wii that was quite similar to Pikmin. It was also very good. So yeah, that's a, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Awesome. All right, so that will take us on to our number 3 picks. Yep. So what have you got for number three? That's a very good question. I'm still tossing up. I've got three things in front of me and I'm like, oh man, it's so difficult. All right. I think it's fair for me to say, and it's quite a recent one actually, that Disco Elysium is my third third favorite game on Switch so far. Okay. Um, yeah, which is it's crazy really. In terms of, like you say, review scores, it's not up there. You've yeah. got... You've got and, and as we say these games, I'm thinking about other ones like Ori, which could have made this list, but it hasn't. It just didn't hit that part in my psyche. It just hasn't connected in the same way as this. This game, I was just saying yeah, to yeah. Uh, to you, Glenn, before we started recording, you can do this in about 20 or 30 hours, yet I've put 60 hours in and I'm still finding things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what it's all about, right? Yeah, it is. And I, I, I like when that happens with games it sadly for me at least doesn't happen as much these days just due to time constraints mm. but when you almost you find a world that you don't want to leave yeah yeah which is strange because it's such a grim world <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i don't know I, I do tend to like more mature games i must admit personally I, I like those where you can almost see something of the developer in the title I mean, yeah, yeah. Go. You know that you, you say it's it's a it's a grim world, and you know, yeah, you're absolutely. But that's what people. That's escapism at its finest, mm. isn't it? I mean, that's why people like things like cyberpunk. Yes, that's, that's the whole that whole point of, of visiting this far off world that is grim and nasty. But you don't actually have to be there physically, so you can kind of enjoy it. You know, definitely. And I felt like when you said cyberpunk, that game, as we all know, just sat up and looked around like someone just said my name. No, Cyberpunk 2077, <laughs> not you, mate. Get back to bed. <laughs> nice one. What about you? Right, my uh, my number three then, strangely, actually, I just, just just thought of it. That was your number one for the year, just gone, yes, right? yeah. Well, this this number three is my number one for the year, just gone, strangely Great enough. Uh, it's It's Monster Hunter, uh, Monster Hunter Rise, mm -hmm. even. Um, yeah, I mean, it was always, a Monster Hunter game was always going to make the yeah. list. And I'll be honest, I, I almost put, Generations Ultimate on and I can't really explain why I think maybe because it's I was kind of thinking of the two and, and when I thought of Generations that, that pang of nostalgia hit mm. me because it is more old school you know yeah. uh, but then when I really thought about it to be honest I thought Generations Ultimate was a step down from 4 so to put it on best games on Switch wouldn't have made sense yeah. so it had to be Rise and Rise is a wonderful game let's be honest you know mm -hmm. It's absolutely great. I um, yeah, it is. It really is. And um, as we've said many times, you know, big Monster Hunter fans. There's just something about the core mechanic. It's because it's it's strange because it's essentially a game full of grinding, yeah. but it doesn't ever feel that way, does it? It's it's it, it, it just feels so compelling to to get back out there and fight the same boss again because you need a few more parts to build the next armor set, or because you want to branch off into a different. A weapon type that you've never tried before and you know this one has perks or piques your interest there's just something about it that works so incredibly well and I feel the combat itself is is also top notch you know it's not just the idea that the execution is, is fantastic as well yeah and when what you were saying before about um, Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate I think of the two games I think we can objectively say that Rise is the better game however mm -hmm. Ultimate was at a time where we had more time on our hands so yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why it almost has that feeling because it, we're associating that with freedom. If we had that amount of time for yeah. Rise, man, we'd be just on it all the time. Yeah, and, and I think you're, you're right in that because 4 Ultimate was probably the peak in terms of having the yeah. time to play and, and, and getting far into it. Yeah. That, it, that one really does hold a special place. But yeah, I think of the two, it has to be Rise, but Monster Hunter in general is just such a just such a brilliant franchise. Yeah, and it's my most played game on Switch, Monster Hunter Rise. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah that, that wouldn't surprise me, yeah. There you go. Right, so uh, number two then, what have you gone for, for for second place? All right, so on to number two, and I'm once again stuck. <laughs> it, it's, it keeps changing constantly, this list, as I'm, as I'm speaking. Um, 
I think yeah. I'm going to happily go for it. And it's, I'm, I'm pleased to have a old school classic style RPG. And I wasn't going to put it on, but I am because despite my initial misgivings, it ended up really hooking me in. And that's Dragon Quest XI S. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think I remember saying to you, actually, like, what's all the fuss about? <laughs> Yeah, when you first started yeah, playing Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'd put in about 10 hours by that point, and it just didn't it oh, okay. just didn't grip me. I wasn't like, okay, this is this is why everyone's going mad for it. I, it for me, yeah. it just felt like a JRPG. Like, it, it, it did the turn-based combat. It did it just did everything a JRPG does. It, I wasn't blown away. But I think yeah. it's so consistent with its quality levels. And also, it does take a few risks later on. There are a few things you're like, holy crap what just happened um and 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 to be honest my favorite jrpgs always do that there are some that stand out final fantasy 7 final fantasy 6 breath of the wild 3 breath of the wild 3 breath of fire (laughs) 3 breath of fire 3 yeah i know what you mean (laughs) they all had that moment i was like oh okay that's interesting and 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 i i remember it you know it resonated with me yeah yeah definitely definitely um i haven't played this one I, i do own it i bought it a couple of weeks ago as it happens i found it Actually, for pretty pretty good price in a second-hand shop, and so I picked that up. So I will give it a bash at some point. Um, but I think the way you feel about this game is probably how I feel about Bravely Default 2, mm. which is one that has just missed the cut for this list. That was kind of one of the ones I mentioned earlier that were just hovering around sixth place. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the Dragon Quest series is just it's legendary by this point, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, they, they are, and for good reason, you know. I might have been initially sceptical, but I think they're great games, and I'm looking forward to whatever comes next. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, right, my second place then, um, we just had my my third place be last year's first place, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was 2020's first place for me, and it's uh, Streets of Rage 4. Great game. Now, um, yeah, I love beat-em-ups. I really do. And uh, it's a genre that's grown on me as I've got older. I mean, as a kid... I mean, I say that, that's not strictly true, because as a kid, Turtles in Time was my favourite game, so um, I've always enjoyed them, don't get me wrong, but I enjoy I enjoy how quick you can play them, you can pick you know, pick up and play at its finest, but you can have a great time whilst doing it. It's not like a game where you kind of pick it up, chip away, then you have to stop gaming for whatever reason, <laughs> you kind of feel like you didn't achieve anything. That's not the case with beat-em-ups, you can just just get in there, you know, just, just call some carnage, call it a day, and you just you feel satisfied, you know? Definitely. And, um, yeah, and, and Streets of Rage 4, I mean, it's funny because I didn't actually have any nostalgia for the Streets of Rage series because I didn't have a Mega Drive as a kid. I remember I remember them coming out, I remember the hype, I remember people that, that did have a Mega Drive that I knew loving them, but I never played them, really, not properly. So I played them a lot later in life, mm. but being a, a big fan of beat-em-ups and, and then playing the series, it almost felt like I'd completed a little part of that puzzle, you know, like there was this big part of the beat-em-up scene that I'd completely missed out on. And then it was like, oh yeah, okay, I get <laughs> it now. This is this is why they're so revered. Yeah. Uh, the first two, certainly. I'm not a huge fan of the third one. It just, it's so as wimpy as it's going to make me sound. It's just so hard. <laughs> it's so difficult. <laughs> um, but four just got the balance spot on. I mean, I, I loved the hand-drawn art style they went for. Absolutely loved it. I loved the little... Uh, the little nuances in the background, like the fact that the the thugs and the the police will fight each other mm. before you turn up, and then they'll both turn their attention to you. Just these silly little things, you know. Um, seeing the characters again, Axel and Blaze, uh, Adam is in it later on as well. You know, just just such a good game, a wonderful game. I've I've spent so much time on it, I've completed it so many times now. It's just fun. It's just pure, unadulterated fun. Yeah, and I think, like you say, it could have done so much wrong, couldn't it? With with the you know, yes. it could have done a lot wrong. It could have just cloned. I mean, I don't know if this would have been wrong, but it could have cloned the old art style. It could have it could have basically taken the old game and just tried to do exactly the same. Well, the thing is that there, there were so many um, attempts to make a Streets of Rage four over the years, mm. and when you look back now, again, like I say, because at that point I didn't have that nostalgia. I didn't really, you know, care. It, it kind of passed me by. But looking back now at some of the some of the games that could have been Streets of Rage four, they would have killed the franchise. Yeah. You know, like the attempts to make it turn it into a 3D brawler and things like that, it would have killed the franchise. And let's hope this one really brings it back to the forefront and, and it lets it move on. And, and we have a fifth game at some point where they continue the you know the fantastic work they've they've started here. Yeah, well, it's it's sold very well so far, which is a good omen. And uh, yeah, they're, they're making well, they're making the the what is it the um, 
the new Turtles game. Yes, yeah, there's um, Dot Emu, isn't it, yeah. are involved in the uh, the Turtle Shredder's Revenge, which oh, <laughs> I cannot explain to you how excited <laughs> I am for that game. Like, I love the Turtles. That's You know, every, every, every one of us has got that, you know, that, that part of them that never grew up, and, and mine is anything Turtles related, you know, and I, I cannot wait for that game. I feel like 90% of my personality is that little boy that never grew up. <laughs> well yeah the amount of the amount of it from person to person differs for sure but yeah <laughs> nice one all right well that takes us on to our number ones doesn't it yep this is uh this is your favorite now of all time on the oh switch oh my goodness i feel like just once again to disclaim breath of the wild would be my top 10 probably be number six something like that it, it just needs to it needs yeah. to be there because i know everyone's gonna be like oh why is breath of the wild not your number one well it's just not <laughs> it's just not basically yeah. let's get yeah. over it yeah all right so, my number one, and it'll be absolutely no surprise to anyone that watches the channel and has good taste, and it is uh, Hollow Knight, which is just yeah. a fantastic game. And I actually bought this for Glenn, but it was too hard, so he didn't play it. No, that's that's not strictly true. That's <laughs> that's about seventy percent true. Uh, I'm waiting for the right moment yeah. to start. It is uh, is the official party line. <laughs> that's a good line. That's a good line. I like it. I mean, <laughs> I think it resonates on a few levels with us as well, right? Because it's a very small team. You're looking at three people essentially um, that did most of the work on it. Uh, they made it during a time when I lived in Australia, so it's like they're they're Australian devs, I believe, unless I'm wrong, and that'll be embarrassing. Um, it, it just <laughs> it just hits on so many levels. It's it's running on the Unity engine. You know, I'm a nerd and. And that can be a difficult one to to make smooth, and it's just beautifully smooth. The art style is amazing. Yeah, yeah. The narrative's great, even though it does that without having to give you a ludicrous amount of exposition. It's for mm -hmm. me, and it's so precise. Like it's just everything you do is what happens on screen, and anything any mistakes are your own. Oh, that's a great game, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've completed it a couple of times, but I haven't. There's you, you can go to like a hundred and twenty percent completion um which i thought i had done but i haven't done right i thought i'd done everything but i haven't which is really upsetting so i'm gonna have to get that done before silk song <laughs> comes out but yeah i mean <laughs> if you can muster up the courage to push yourself into it glenn m make it happen <laughs> I, I do want to play it like it's not um i want to i want to dedicate some time to yeah. it i don't want to pick it up get a little way in then you know what it's like with with our schedules you know you have to put it down and never return to it again i've uh, you know mentioned in brave De bravely default a minute ago that's what i did this christmas with that game when we finished and we had a, a week off i was like right i'm gonna play a game i'm gonna play a long game and i'm gonna dedicate as much time as i can to it and i want to do that with with hollow knight yeah yeah i think that's fair enough but yeah i am looking forward to uh, to playing it and and from from what i've heard and from what you've told me you know many many times uh, are definitely a uh, a worthy taker of your your number one spot. For sure, I'm I'm actually really interested to see what your number one is. I think it's Football Manager. Well, <laughs> no, <laughs> it, no, Football Manager was one of those games I mentioned that didn't make the cut. It very nearly did, but uh, no, that's kind of sixth, seventh place, I would say. Uh, my number one. You've mentioned Breath of the Wild a few mm -hmm. times. Um, it's not Breath of the Wild. It is the Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening. Ah, very good. Yeah. Now. As you said, uh, Breath of the Wild is a, is a fantastic game. Um, very much enjoyed my time with it. For me, for my personal tastes, um, Link's Awakening is a better Zelda game. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I love Zelda, and I love this sort of Zelda. That top-down, classic Zelda. And Link's Awakening was one of my favourite games as a kid. I had it. I got it for Christmas one year for the Game Boy. It's, it's funny, isn't it? My mum and dad don't know anything about games really i'm sure they wouldn't mind me saying that you know but they picked some cracking games for christmas <laughs> like without any input do you know what i mean i don't know what drew them to the box because it's a gold box with a with a shield crest on it it's not particularly exciting but fair play they picked it and what an amazing game it was on the game boy and then when they did the remake i mean this is this is a remake this is how you remake an old mm. game you know that that plasticine play-doh art style looks amazing i absolutely love it um it does stutter at times, which is very disappointing. But, you know, aside from that, the game itself is just fun. It's got this, like, whimsical land. I think it's called Koholint Island off the top of my mm -hmm. head. Um, and that, that art style that they've chosen just brings it to life better than I could have ever imagined. You know, I honestly can't imagine playing a remake of it in any other style now. High and drawn. It just... Seeing what, what they could do and the fact they did it, 
that's what I love about Nintendo. That's when Nintendo will bang on it, you know? Yeah, and just uh, not a red herring, but kind of along the same lines. Our audience average age is between 25 and 40, I'd say, for the vast majority. Mm -hmm. And I'd be interested to know in the comments how many of us on Christmas Day or whenever it was sat and opened this game, because I did. And, I mean, that was 29 years ago. (sighs) Oh, dear me, that's... Outrageous, it was, but it, it was so outrageous. good, wasn't it? Do you know what? I miss like the smell of the manuals. Like I miss that smell. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I've still, I've still got my box copy. I've still got my Game Boy you box copy. You found it, didn't you? The manual and everything. Yeah, I found it in the loft at my mum and dad's house the other, the other month. Um, I was up there looking for something else completely, and I was like, "Whoa, look at this!" Like, where's that? <laughs> Did come you from? hold it above your head and so, go? Um, da, da, da. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly that. But um, I, yeah, I know. I absolutely love this guy. I'd love to see them do this same art style and everything with. A link to the past, which is my my second mm. favourite um, Zelda game. I'd love I'd love to to see him do that. But yeah, I mean, I played this on the Switch. I, I completed it. I lost one life, and I lost that life in my in the first dungeon because I was kind of acclimatising back to it, forgetting you know like the range of your sword and stuff. And I took a few hits, and I didn't lose another life through the whole game. So then I played it back for again straight after and did a, a deathless run. That's how wow. much I love this game. Wowzers! Fair play to you. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. All right, brilliant. Well, that takes us to the end of our top five games each. Um, if you'd like to pop your top five down in the comments, it would be really nice to give away a game or something, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. Yeah, stick your your favourite games in or, or your your top five, top ten, whatever you would like to do, and we will uh, we will find a, a code of a, a game to give away to uh, to one of your picks. Awesome. All right. Well, all that's left to say is for all. Oh no, hang on. Is this the right part where I say goodbye? <laughs> you, you could say goodbye now I just want to say again actually before we yeah. go I mean there, there are some big games missing you've mentioned Breath of the Wild a couple of times uh, Mario Odyssey I'm sure is another yeah. one Smash Brothers you know there's loads and loads of them but it, it depends what your preferences are I'm not a huge 3D platformer fan you know mm-hmm. I enjoy them but one of them no matter how good is never going to make my top 5 Smash Brothers is great but I'd pick Ultra Street Fighter 2 all day long over it you know it's just it's just about the person you are and your preferences isn't it you know exactly right yeah all right nice one um just a massive thanks for the last year from our patrons you guys have really helped us out on many occasions where things have exploded absolutely (laughs) um it's you know it's useful and uh to the rest of you that watch the channel we're hoping to Glenn was talking about setting up channel membership stuff um maybe in 2022 so yeah that's something else to look forward to And uh, yeah, as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!